Ay bobo, ay bobo, bon comba. Ay bobo, bon comba. Ay bobo. All right. Now, last week, yeah, I, I, I did announce that we were going to be dealing with Haiti come what may this week. All right. And one of the points that I made uh, in relation to the situation then, because it was announced that Jamaica and Barbados and a few other nations were, that there, was a, there was a meeting taking place in a Jamaica. Um, and, you know, there was going to be some, you know, meeting to resolve what is happening in, in Haiti. And I said that the, the CARICOM has no moral standing as far as this issue is concerned at the moment because CARICOM and the Caribbean in general tends, yeah, more often than not to have betrayed the people of Haiti, yes, when it comes to um, US uh, and, and Western imperialism um, in general. There's one or two times where you can say, all right, something different, like after the earthquake and everything there in, 20, in 2010, there was a lot of um, galvanizing internationally, really, uh, in relation to aid and so on and so forth. But I was condemning the, 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 um, the, the CARICOM initiative, one, because CARICOM's relationship with Haiti is sketchy, say the least and two because they invited and i'm using that term advisedly all right because really truly, they, they never invite they were told to bring on uh france and uh, america and canada i believe that, that those are the major ones that they, that they were told to bring. and brazil, brazil I think, and mexico yeah, right right yeah, and mexico yes indeed yeah so i i am condemning caricom as yeah, you should and <laughs> right, right. So I, I was wanted to get to see what you're saying about the Caricom meeting and what and what what can you tell us about what took place in in this meeting and what they're looking to bring on board. <laughs> I, I I have to to say first of all, Caricom has a very dubious relationship with Haiti, um, mm -hmm. um, because Caricom never wanted Haiti as part of the the Caricom um, Caribbean community. They're 50 years old. Haiti became a member of Caricom um, in 2002. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 before that, the, you know, we have to be honest that the stereotypes that the West have created of Haiti travels. Right. Um, they travel all over. And the empty Haitianism that exists in the Caribbean is very much. A, a, a terrible one, right? I mean, I mean, even as the CARICOM people are saying that they're um, they're supporting Haiti. Look. The Bahamas are treating Haitian refugees worse than Donald Trump. Like right now, there are mm -hmm. pictures of them. They left them outside in a um, in a uh, with a fence around them in the open air, and then mm -hmm. they're and then they're deporting them. Jamaica and Barbados are deporting them. So Caricom has a relationship, and where you can travel to Caricom countries without visas unless you're Haitian, right? So yep. so 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 first of all, let's be real about that, right? And so so mm -hmm. part of it is. CARICOM has, you know, the because Haiti is the first and only, you know, really truly revolutionary um, independent country in the region. The yeah. the rest of the region, a lot of them look down on Haiti, down to the okay. Vodou religion, down to the language, yeah. down to the fact that they were too African, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, and so, so, so that's the thing. When when and also because we're so numerous, so Haiti's population makes up fifty percent of. Of CARICOM's population, more than that. So we're yep. once we join CARICOM, its top population doubled, right? More than mm -hmm. double, right? So there's mm -hmm. that. So you have that long history of like the Francophone countries that are still colonies of France. You have Jamaica, who says it's independent, but its highest court is still Vichy in London, right? So so we have that, right? And so 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 this is the CARICOM we're talking about. The one time I gotta say, the the only time CARICOM helped Haiti was in 2003 under PJ mm -hmm. Patterson, who was prime minister yes. of, of Jamaica, but also the chairman of, of the CARICOM. And he yeah. was the one that actually was really trying to help Aristide as the onslaught yeah. of the foreign powers were coming in. Mm -hmm. And even yeah. after the US removed Aristide from power, um, mm -hmm. Jamaica refused to acknowledge um, this yeah. imposed government that the U.S. put on us refused mm -hmm. to um, to deal with it, and also kept asking the UN for an investigation on how it is that U.S. Marines can remove uh, our president. The UN kept dismissing him. So P.J. Patterson was also behind Haiti joining CARICOM. No one else yeah. wanted to join CARICOM. So the nerve of these little countries to now say mm -hmm. they're going to help Haiti mm -hmm. is astounding, right? So that's the yeah. first. And the Haitians are yeah. incensed, right? All of us mm -hmm. are insensitive mm -hmm. at that. But what makes it worse, now, if it was on their own, the U.S. paid for this trip in this meeting to yeah, yeah. Them fly to Jamaica, pay for yeah. their hotel, and, yeah. and then for these people 
to sit there and let these white countries that started mm-hmm. the coup d'etat, that did all that, to dictate to them what they say, you know, to dictate to them that they're going to rule, you know, make a mm-hmm. decision about Haiti is outrageous. First mm-hmm. of all, Farrakhan has no political legitimacy to make any decision about mm-hmm. another sovereign nation. Imagine. Okay. Like the nerve, right? So that's the first. Second of all, they're being told what to do by the U.S. So they're using, they're being used by the U.S. and they don't even realize it, or they realize it and they're okay with it. No, they realize it. They, them, them must know. Yeah. They, 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 but and Mia yeah. Wally in particular deserves much of exactly. anger because she's using this to 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 secure her seat as the next secretary general of the U.N. That's what she used. She's using Haiti for, right? So, mm-hmm. so there's that. But, one of the key things about this meeting that happened in, in, in on Monday last week, right, mm-hmm. was that the CARICOM members uh, allowed themselves, so they met secretly for three yes. hours without Haitians before they let no, the, no, I, yeah. mm-hmm. before they let the Haitians in. So they're mm-hmm. meeting with the, these white rulers who are telling them what to do mm-hmm. before they let the Haitians in. And the Haitians that they let in are handpicked by mm-hmm. the U.S. and the Haitians join in through Zoom, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so that's that. But the other thing is, Mia Motley had the nerve to start the meeting speaking in condescension to these Haitians by saying, "You cannot be part of the deal if you don't first agree to our terms." And one right. of the terms is that you have to agree to this multinational, um, to 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 this mercenaries coming as an armed invasion of Haiti. So right. be at the table that they made, you mm-hmm. basically have to agree to a foreign invasion in order for you to even have a say in yeah. the running of the country. And the fact that it's CARICOM that's facilitating this right. is more disgusting than anything. Look, we can deal with white supremacy in these white people. It's the right. black folks that are doing this, working as overseas. Right. That becomes the biggest right. problem for us, right? And so that's how I, I feel. And so Haitians see this. They see this, and what what Caricom needs to ask, and you know, I and I wrote this article for Starbucks View saying why is Caricom betraying Haiti? Why mm-hmm. why are they why they should ask themselves why did Canada refuse to lead the mission in Haiti? Because the U.S. Yeah. asked Canada first, Canada said no. Then mm-hmm. the U.S. asked Brazil, and Brazil said no. They mm-hmm. asked Mexico, Mexico said no. Well, and yeah. so then everybody's saying all these white countries are saying no, and then you Caricom, you yes. and the Canadians. Like this to yes. me is the biggest betrayal ever. And if I was president of Haiti, the first thing I would do is remove ourselves from Caricom and never have anything to do with any of these house Negroes. One hundred percent. I just want to say, um, as as an African whose family hails from the nation, well, one part of my family hails from the nation of Jamaica. It's necessary. First of all, there there are many Jamaicans, my sister, who are going to be very offended by your refer to Jamaica as a, a little island. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I love politics. I love solid thing. But it's true. You know what I'm saying? Jamaican people. Hi, to bigger than we. I love solid thing. Go. You know what I'm saying? Um, but also, it's necessary to note that um, that uh, uh, our prime minister, <laughs> quote unquote, is a member of the Privy Council, yeah, which is uh, adjudicates the, the quote unquote highest court, yeah. And many of you are celebrating, uh, you know, the release of Vibes Cartel at the moment. Ask yourself the question, why does it take for Jamaica to go to a British court, yeah, to free, uh, quote unquote, vibes cartel, yeah. What, why, why is that necessary? Um, in I, the first place, yeah, These I want to know why your prime minister, you know, had twelve days of mourning for the biggest gangster, Queen Elizabeth, more than oh. English, more than Britain. They had a longer what? mourning period than Britain for the biggest gangster mm-hmm. of the world, the 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 Queen Elizabeth. My sister, but believe me, Jamaica is not independent. You know, one hundred percent. Believe you me, believe you me. When when that happened, we was fire burning it just like how you say it a while ago. Yeah, look a stool pigeon them, um, crying crocodile tears for for for, for Queen uh, Elizabeth. Um, now, exactly right. You know what I'm saying. So this is a. Uh, we, we, there's so much we can go into on that particular point, and from a Pan African point of view, you know, my sister, it's necessary to note that it would be beautiful. Yeah, it would be beautiful if the Caribbean region had the backbone and the standing the moral standing to come in and assist our brothers and sisters in Haiti and kicking out <laughs> the foreigners so to speak the Bakra um you know with the with the support and in 
collaboration with our brothers and sisters on the ground in Haiti. Unfortunately, that does that reality does not exist at the minute. And I recall very well, in fact. Uh, during um, 2003 when Aristide was in Jamaica because you're, you're right in the sense of the propaganda, yes, had affected the ordinary people of Jamaica because there was a big debate even in the dance hall community about the extent to which this man from Haiti should be allowed to stay in the country, yes? Big, big debate, Guan, and half the people, them don't know nothing about Haiti apart from when they hear about from US um, and, and, and Hollywood. Yeah, and so there's a lot that we need to do as 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 a region, uh, in order uh to correct uh the psychology of our people, especially in relation to Haiti. All of us in the Caribbean owe a debt to Haiti. Yes, because everywhere we stood up and fought, but it was Haiti that won. Yes, and I'm saying that as an African from Jamaica, where we have. Uh, uh, Sam Sharp and Paul Bogle and Taki and an African from the Caribbean where we have class. We all fought, you know, but Haiti won. And when Haiti won, they opened the doors to the whole away. So the, to, to see us now deporting our brothers and sisters from Haiti is a travesty. And we need to know that up front.